Gigi, uh, you weren't with us yesterday, but I was pushing back on the idea that Vallo was so stoic, so stoic on day one. Uh, and because my thought was, well, she's going to have to show emotion because she's got to humanize herself because she's done the most inhumane thing that we can think about when it comes to a parent and the accusation is murdering their own kids. So what did you observe and what wound up being uh, really the flashpoint for the jury and Vallo? Well, after lunch, we noticed when Lori was brought in, she looked like she'd been crying and looked upset. The jury was not in the room, by the way, and they said they needed to talk to their clients. So we took a 30-minute recess, came back outside the presence of the jury, and she wanted to waive her right to, to sit in the trial today. They said that this morning was very hard on her and reminded the judge of her fragile mental state. And ultimately, the judge said no. So she had to stay in there while these autopsy photos were on the screen. Uh, and uh, you said at one point it looked like she was sleeping. Uh, what did you make of that? Do you want me to get them? She was definitely sleeping at one point, although they're, you know, they spent a lot of time back there. I don't know if maybe she was medicated. That's just a theory I have. But I haven't seen her last week or this week at all look tired even. And um, as soon as we got settled down and, and Detective Hermosillo was back on the stand narrating these photos, she was sound asleep for a solid half hour and in fact fell asleep until the judge called the end of the day. So about 30 minutes, I guess. So I don't know if she was medicated or just uh, tuned out, but uh, from what I could tell, she didn't look at any of those photos. She was asleep. Wow. Uh, you were with the grandparents, uh, Larry Woodcock, uh, Kay, his wife. Uh, you said that Larry was also crying. Uh, what was their takeaway from today? How were they holding it together? You know, Larry, uh, Kay chose not to come. She just did not want to see those photos of her grandson entirely that way, and I completely understand. Larry did stay and kept his head down and was trying to be respectful to the court by muffling his sobs, but he sobbed throughout the entire uh, time that those photos were on the screen. And, and Chris, they were terrible. They were just uh, about some of the worst I've ever seen, and, and that's saying something. Uh, one last thing. The jury... Uh, did it seem that they were just broken up by the grisly nature of it, or did, there, did they seem to be angry about it as well? There were some that gave her some stares. I mean, after uh, one particular photo that showed uh, J.J. before they unwrapped him completely, uh, he gave her the stare down. There were several men and women jurors who grabbed tissues, wiping their eyes. Very difficult photos to see, and uh, did see several of them look her way. Mm. while she was sleeping. Great reporting, Gigi. Appreciate it. Uh, Dave Ehrenberg, how do you deal as a prosecution uh, with the delicacy of what you're showing people? How do you deal uh, with the demonstration of emotion by the defendant? You need to show it, Chris. I mean, this is a horrific case, and it looks like this is the first time that Lori Vallow had to come to grips with what she did, allegedly, because it, the uh, the sights of her children it, it were so horrific that she couldn't take it. She didn't want to show up. But you know what? As a prosecutor, you want her to be there, not just to see what she did, but you want her to be there because you don't want this to be grounds for appeal later on. The worst thing for prosecutors here is to get a conviction, and there will be a conviction, overturned on appeal because because she says, well, I had ineffective assistance of counsel. I shouldn't have listened to my lawyer who said I didn't need to be there. And it's true that defendants who are not there are more likely to be convicted than defendants who are there. So, I, you know, it, uh, I think that the prosecutors did the right thing to push the judge to make her stay there and the judge did the right thing to force her to be there. Hey, Don Johnson, let me ask you this. When you are dealing with a defendant who has to uh, face that kind of, uh, you know, just the sympathy factor, the, you know, the, the contempt for doing that to children, what do you do with that? Let me tell you one thing, and um, I appreciate Dave's uh, insight here, but I have never had a murder case ever where the prosecution said, hey, judge, I don't want to show these pictures because they're too grisly. I don't want to show these pictures because they're too prejudicial. It's always the defense that is making that argument. In, and I will tell you, you, you kind of just barely touched on what the problem is going to be here. I would not worry if I was a prosecutor and I really cared about my conviction. I'm not going to care whether she's there or not, but I am going to be kicking myself if tomorrow or the next day she says or her lawyer says, 
she can't come to court anymore. Uh, I've got a doubt as to her competency. She's not able to proceed. I'm moving for a mistrial. And by the way, Judge, you could have avoided this by not having her sit there and having to watch this. So, uh, you know, be careful of what you wish for. If she is of a fragile mental state, you are setting yourself up for grounds for appeal if she is convicted uh, on the basis that you engineered the complete... Um, dissembling, if you will, or deconstruction of her mental state. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.